morning happy wednesday everyone welcome to um up and atom this morning where we're going to be going over synonyms and antonyms two words i'm a bit over familiar with saying after making um some micro lessons for them on the video library um check those out if you want to study antonyms and um, synonyms with me even more but that's what we're doing today. Very excited to get going. Thank you for joining. We'll get going at nine o'clock. So we'll just, I'll just start chatting about what we're gonna be doing, see how everyone is. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing really well, Charlotte and Esme. Thank you for asking. Hi, Hayley, nice to see you again. Hi, Bissy, lots, great to see so many familiar names. I'm doing very well, thank you, Chris. Oh, I'm glad you're excited, I am too. Well done, Joshua, antonyms are opposites. Really, really good. I can see we already have some budding um english writers whatever we want to call them in the class today um again thank you very much for um coming this morning we're doing synonyms and antonyms today are you so we're going to look at we're going to try and build your vocabulary we're going to learn some new words there's a bit of comprehension practice so lots of fun well done Haley. synonyms mean the same thing antonyms mean the opposite things morning cara i'm glad you're excited i am so excited too sabaji uh, it's great to see so many of you excited about learning this morning. I hope everyone is doing well in the first week of lockdown. It's been a bit stressful, hasn't it? Um, but well done for carrying on working, carrying on studying and coming to these lessons. It's really, really impressive to see you working so hard when there's so much going on in the world. And I hope all the parents are doing well as well, because I know it's a very stressful time. Thank you, Luciana. I love my T-shirt too. Um, it is a nice little Adam T-shirt. Um, I think I maybe made the logo a bit big, but I don't care. I like it. Brings out my eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Nia, as well. Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you again, too. Um, just pretty, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, yeah, are you a great example of a synonym, big and huge? Those are two examples. So I can already see a lot of you have given me a great definition of um, what a synonym is and what an antonym is. We're going to go over some examples. We're going to be looking at prefixes as well. Prefixes are a really important way that we can make antonyms. Does anyone know any negative prefixes? Prefixes we can add to root words to make a, an antonym. Anyone know any? Perfect, well done Nancy, well done Prasika. D, dis, really, really good. So loyal is someone who is loyal to you and is a follower and then disloyal is the antonym of loyal. It means the opposite of it, really good. We can use that also for disorganized, well done Satish. Um, dis, uh, Ayub, great stream of three negative prefixes, um, din and miss. Ah, oh, Jan, really good. Lia, less is a good one, but that's a suffix because we put that at the end of the, end of the word, okay? So something like worthless. Re um, Shayan is to do something again. Um, so it's not a negative prefix, but it is a prefix. Really lovely answer from Nicole. Everyone who look at Nicole's answer, it's brilliant. Negative statements are the opposite of affirmative statements. So negative statements, we add a negative prefix to them. A, dis, ill, im, in, er, non, un. Oh, say that too quickly and you get a bit breathless, right? But very good work class. I can see some great negative uh, suffixes sorry, prefixes in the Q and A. Right, we'll get going at nine. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get the presentation up and then I will share my screen. I hope you are as excited as I am to get going today. Let's go, I'll just share my screen and then we are good to go. Okay, so hey everyone, welcome to this Zoom lesson or um, if you're joining on YouTube, hello. Uh, I'm Jono from Atom and we are doing Up and Atom today where we're going over antonyms and synonyms, so it's a good English lesson. Um, I'll be going through the presentation, there'll be plenty of chances to vote on the poll and answer questions on the uh, in the Q&A box too. You can watch this lesson a bit later too. If you're joining, if you're joining later, you can re-watch and stream this lesson to help organise your day or do some fun studying. Let's get going because it's it's nearly it's nearly nine o'clock. But what I'm going to do, because I know a lot of you have been coming to these lessons all week and all of last week, you must be sick of me by now. I'm going to do a quick warm up, just looking at some of the concepts that we've covered in earlier lessons. So we're doing synonyms and antonyms today, but I want to ask a few questions just to jog our memory a little bit about some stuff we covered last week and earlier in the week this week. OK, so I'm going to show you a question. This is just a warm up. Which sentence correctly uses an ellipsis? Now, I remember this class was really good at using ellipses 
<laughs> ellipses. I'm not sure what the plural is, whatever. Um, and something I loved from the q and I remember someone said an ellipsis is like a dun dun dun. So that's my hint for this question. Minute to have a vote just to warm up our brains and let me have a sip of coffee. <clears throat> <coughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, I'll read through the different question, the different answer options. So A, I was running late. Luckily, I had my time turner. Oh, I didn't know where to turn, but knew I had to get home. Spelling mistake in that one too. Do not like that sentence. Um, C, I didn't know where to turn, dot, dot, dot. C, I turned around at, sorry, D, I turned around and... Okay, so this is just to warm up. So I'm just giving you a minute. If you don't have time to vote, don't worry. I know some people take a little bit, need a little bit more time to read something for a variety of reasons. Just watch this back um, or have a look at, uh, or have a listen to the explanation just so we can get cracking. I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. And I can see the majority of us went for answer option C. Now let's have a look. Well done, C is completely correct. We use an ellipsis, that cute little dot, I think there's an extra dot there by accident, but C is correct. Um, it's dot, 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 not four dots. And it shows us that something's missing from the sentence. Now, the re a few of you picked answer option D. Now, D is almost right, but we can't have that exclamation mark before the ellipsis. Sometimes you might see a dot, 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 exclamation mark. That's OK. But we do not have an ellipsis after an exclamation mark. I'm sorry for the extra dots in the ellipsis in answer option C. Thank you for everyone pointing that out to me. But that is the correct use of an ellipsis. Um, I didn't know where to turn. It tells us that there's something missing from the sentence and it also builds up some tension. Ooh. So that is why we include an ellipsis. Right, next one, um, where should the missing question mark go? Um, Harvey smiled and asked, how are you? Does it go after the bunny ears or before the bunny ears? Just vote A or B. Bunny ears are also called quotation marks or speech marks. Oh, well done, lightning speed. 40 of us already have the right answer, well done. Where are we putting the question mark? That was my bunny impression. You can tell it's early. I'll give you a bit longer than 10 seconds. I think that was a bit ambitious of me. Also, welcome everyone that's just joined. Today we are doing synonyms and antonyms. We're just doing a quick warm up that's covering some of the topics that we covered last week and earlier in the week this week. That's, if you wanna be fancy, that's called spacing and interleaving topics, which won't, doesn't need to mean much to you, but just means that we are reintroducing concepts to help them stick in your brain. So I promise I'm not just doing this for my own um, fun. Although it is also, it is also fun. Okay, I did start the lesson quite early today, Xiaobing, you're right. Ah, oh, Nia, you've got five minutes of bunnies, that's so cute. I love bunnies. Okay, how did we all do? Let's have a look at the poll. So a bit of a spin in the answers. Again, this is warm-up question, so just giving you a minute. Sorry if you didn't have time to um, answer, but I'll give you an explanation. So we can see that the majority of us went for answer option B, and that's completely correct. So how are you? Those are the exact words that Harvey said. This is an example of direct speech. Because we are quoting exactly what Harvey said, we need to put the question mark within the speech marks or bunny ears or whatever you want to call them. I would go with speech marks, but bunny marks is fine here. Speech marks if you're talking um, with your teacher or it's an exam. So we put the question mark inside the um, bunny ears because we are using the exact words that Harvey said. So that question mark needs to go with this, the question, how are you? Another just thing to remember, notice how how starts with a capital letter. That's a really important thing to remember when we introduce um, speech. Does anyone know this fancy name? As a, This is an extend um, question. Harvey smiled and asked, that's a specific type of clause. Does anyone know the name of that clause? that type of clause. Reported clause, really, really good, yeah. 
report very very good reported clause really really nice well done nicole well done busy well done zen yang well done kibrim really good it's a reported clause because it's um reporting um it's introducing the direct speech very very good okay so that was our nice little warm-up now let's get into what we're covering today so we're doing antonyms and synonyms today we've already had some amazing definitions of what those words means in the q a so thank you everyone coming eager to learn today really appreciate your enthusiasm it helps keep me motivated too so i really really appreciate it thank you we're going to be looking at nuance between words so nuance means subtle differences we covered that a little bit last night in the um, get ahead for year seven club so if any of you are at that we'll be building on some of the knowledge that we covered there nuance is quite a tricky um, thing to get your grasp around so we'll go through it and there'll be lots of questions and polls remember these questions will start easier and get progressively harder so we'll start at lower key stage two and then i'll signpost as we're moving into upper key stage two content so there should be a bit of something for everyone Okay, let's get going. So what are antonyms and synonyms? Now, this is just a nice recap. You can sit back and chill and just absorb all of this knowledge before we get going with the questions. So antonyms are words that have opposite meanings. So something like um, happy and sad, whereas synonyms are words that have a similar meaning. So happy and joyful. That's an example of a synonym. Now, if we want to get all fancy, yeah, we can talk about the Etymology, I think that's how you say it, which is where words come from. Um, they, it comes from Greek, okay? So maybe I should do a Greek words of the week next. We did a Latin words of the week last week. So Greek words are very old. That's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, anti means opposite or against. So you can also think about that. You, you've probably come across that in a lot of different contexts. So I'm trying to think of some like, anti, you might be anti something, so anti French toast, if you don't like French toast. I love French toast, I'm very pro French toast. But anti means opposite or against. Nim means word, who knew? Um, so that's where we, that's how we, if we put those two words together, we form antonym, which is, uh, means a word with an opposite meaning. We can do exactly the same uh, with synonym. If we get the Greek word sin means with, and nim means word, just like with um, antonym, we put those together, we get synonym, which means with word. So again, similar meaning. They're like friends, they hold hands, they're like, you know what I mean? They're synergistic, they love it, we love a synonym. So that's just a nice little introduction to the um, origins of synonyms and antonyms. Okay, what, I'm gonna give you some examples of some, but I wanna see what synonyms and antonyms you know first. Let's do synonyms first. Can you all in the Q&A give me an example of two words that are synonyms? I want to pick my favourite words to say out. What are two words that are synonyms? Friends and buddies. Yes, you love that. Ah, oh, I love that idea, Nia, doing words that come from India. That's a really good idea. I'll put that on the list of words of the week to do. Happy and glad. Very good, Karen. Ah, oh, happy and jubilant. Nice one, FF. Beautiful and pretty. Nice, Adara. Sad and unhappy, very nice. Hideous and ugly, nice one, Gianni. Uncle and auntie, I wouldn't necessarily say are synonyms. They have a similar meaning, but you couldn't call your uncle your auntie, so I wouldn't call, class that as a synonym. Bravery and courage, nice one, Tali. Big and gigantic, Arian, okay, we didn't come to play. Ah, Gear 30, implore and persuade, really nice. Ooh, alluring and beautiful, Amiyoa, really nice. Sweet and yummy, very good sound. Anxious and scared, nice one, knee. Yeah, really good examples of synonyms there. Okay, we've done our synonyms, we've done our similar meanings. I think you know what question's coming next. Can I have some antonyms, please, in the Q and A? Last one, busy, philanthropic and kind. Really nice, really fancy word there. If anyone doesn't know philanthropic, add that to your vocab journal. So can we have some, uh, yep some antonyms now in the q a what antonyms do everyone have big and small well done sad and happy well done oscar gradually and slowly really nice anonymous attendee what's really important to remember with synonyms and antonyms they need to be of the same word class so if you if you have an adverb the antonym of that adverb also needs to be an adverb hatred and love very nice jubilant and florious well done jonathan also great name 
War and Peace, very good. Yeah, we've got some really strong vocab coming through. Let me scroll down. Sparse and Jumbo, nice, Nicole. Hideous and Beautiful, very good, Mark. Make sure you're looking through the Q&A too and noting down any new words as well. I'm really impressed with this class and you're all supporting each other's um, learning. That's really, really nice. Ah, oh, Emma, Heroic and Cowardy, really like that one. Okay, we have some great antonyms. Distressed and Calm, nice one, Vebav. Ah, oh, excellent work, everyone. Rainforest and desert, nice. Very different style of thinking. Really, really good. Okay, so that those were some lovely synonyms and antonyms for everyone. Thank you for contributing. Here are just some other examples um, of some of some other antonyms and synonyms you might have come across. Happy and sad, soft and hard, nervous and calm, confusing and clear. And then synonyms, angry, furious, kind, caring, honest, truthful, huge and massive. Now, what we'll be doing a little bit later, later in the lesson is looking how synonyms have slightly nuanced meaning. So, um, sometimes you have two words that have similar meaning, but one, one might mean something different. So like uh, teasing someone and insulting someone. That was an example I used yesterday if you were here. So if you tease someone, it can be a bit playful, whereas insulting someone is quite mean. So even though they both, their synonyms have a similar meaning, um, insulting is a bit more intense, right? So we think, think of words as having like a scale, right? Because you've got happy and then you've got exuberant, which is like super happy. They're synonyms, but there's a different intensity there. So that's what we mean by nuance, a little sneak peek of what's coming later. So I think I just accidentally unshared my screen, which is fant a fantastic way to continue the lesson. I think we should be back. So we've I alluded that this was coming earlier in the lesson. We need to add a prefix to these words to form the antonyms A, B, C, or D. Which one is it? Go, I'll give you a minute to have a think and then we'll go over the answer. So a lot of these words are negative prefixes, but what you need to remember is that you still need to pick the words that have, um, the words that actually make sense, okay? So even though these are all negative prefixes, I'll give you a hint, dis decided is not a word. Uh, excellent work. 90% of us have voted and 90% of us have got the right answer. Brilliant. Let's have a look at what the answer, what we put. So the majority of us put answer option B, which is completely correct. Let's have a look at why. Let's look, have a look at those words that we can make. So I'm going to annotate, I'm going to go for a nice little dusty purple colour. And what we can do is if we take the un, we can add it to here, we get unexpected. Over here, we get undecided, like me in life. And then we have unnecessary, which all are, this is how we can create antonyms. So a great way of boosting your vocabulary twofold is just to learn some prefixes, know what I mean? We learn the prefixes and then we can just get a bunch of root words, add onto them, boom, we've doubled our vocab for the day. That is the kind of efficiency we want in our learning, love. Okay, so very well, done. Everyone clearly knows prefixes as have been, has been doing all of their homework. Very good. So un was the answer. Let's have a go at another one because that question went so well. Which prefix can be added to these antonyms? To form these antonyms. Sorry. So busy, you can only see everyone else's answer when I share the screen. So have a vote and then I'll, you'll be able to see how everyone else voted.
we're doing really, really well on this. I'll just give us another 10 seconds. Um, Elizabeth, I think, was asking if I like dogs. I love dogs. They're very cute. Very adorable that you have a little golden retriever puppy. That's adorable. Very jealous. I go on a walk every morning to the park near me just to go look at the dogs. There are so many and they're so cute. I really like, what's my favorite kind of dog? I really like sausage dogs. They're adorable. Um, and I like setters. They're really pretty too. Oh, and a whippet. Oh, they just are so cute. Whippet, they always look like they're a little bit anxious and I really vibe with that energy. Love a whippet or even a greyhound, but whippets are just so like cute and compact. Aww. Okay, back to antonyms, sidebar over. How did we all vote? 91% um, of us has voted well done. Um, for those of you who got your voting in time, um, don't worry if you didn't, you can always come back and watch this lesson afterwards if you need a little bit more time. Right, let's uh, share those results. And the majority of us went for answer option C which is completely correct. Well done. Disorganized, disorderly, and disintegrated. So if you're disorganized, you forget things, you might forget where your keys are, you might lock yourself out of your house, guilty. Um, if you're disorderly, like if you're very orderly, you're very like composed and like it's a very orderly fashion, it's all very good. If you're disorderly, you're a bit rambunctious, you're a bit like, I don't know, a bit a bit disorder. If it's disorderly, it's not very, it's again, not very organized, lots of chaos chaos energy 2021 disintegrated that's a bit of a trickier word in if something is integrated it is like together or like like formed together so you might have like an integrated plan of attack which is when all of the different teams working on it um have fed their ideas and you have one like cohesive integrated plan or on a more boring level you might have like integrated software on your computer where the computer already comes with like word and stuff on it so it's integrated. Um, disintegrated um, means not integrated. And also that's a word with two meanings. So if something's disintegrated, it's like blah, 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 blah. It like exactly that. That's the di dictionary definition. Blah, 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 blah. It's like if it's, it's like when you like blast something into tiny little pieces, it's disintegrated. So again, that's a nice like nuance, I guess, kind of meaning where a word can mean two different things. Right, really good. Let's get a bit harder now. So I'm gonna read this out and then we need to pick a synonym for irascible. Now, if you haven't come across that word, read for context. And I'll also give you some hints on how to do these questions. I will launch the poll now and then I will just read out the, I'll read out the text on the screen and then give you some time to have a vote. Nothing could please him that day. His temper had risen to great heights and he was stomping around the house like nobody's business. Oh, where did that flaming mouse go? He raged. He looked under the couch, under the kitchen table, the curtains, the carpets, the bed sheets. He became so irascible that little Joe thought he was going to turn purple. Oh, calm down, dad. It's just a mouse, Joe exclaimed bravely. His dad looked at him and frowned, ellipsis. He didn't eat your rice krispies though, did he? He feigned an appearance of calmness and control. So what do we think irascible means? If you already have the answer and you want to extend yourself a little bit, can you tell me in the Q&A what feigned means? That might be a word you haven't come across before. What does to feign something mean? So I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer for other people to vote, but if you want to stretch or challenge yourself, can you give me a definition of feigned? And yes, I also love cats for those of you asking. And indeed I am from Zimbabwe, you, thank you for sharing. So what does feigned mean? Yeah, very good, Sabaji, well done, Prasika, well done. Even to feign something is to fake. Eleanor, I think that's my favorite um, definition, to pretend, so to pretend to do some. Yeah, feign means fake, well done, Tali. Really strong um, vocabulary. 
someone's asking what jovial means. I'll go through all of the definitions on the screen um, when we go over the answer. So yes, well done, Paulina as well. Feigned means faked. Doesn't mean to faint. It sounds a bit like faint joy, but it means to um, fake something. Um, so you might feign enthusiasm when you're talking to someone you don't really like, but you've got to keep up appearances, right? To fake something really, really good. Okay, I'm going to end the poll there. How did we vote for irascible? So well done for everyone that voted. Don't worry if you need a bit more time. You can always come back later. It's okay if it takes you a bit longer to read things. So let's have a look. So you should be able to see how everyone voted. The majority of us went for answer option D. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, that it, it is frustrated. Oh no, oh, it's the antonym of irascible. Make sure you read the question properly. Um, so the answer was C, I might have said synonym. If I said synonym, I'm really sorry. We were looking for the antonym, which is easygoing. So make sure you read the question properly. So the antonym of irascible, we need the word with the opposite meaning. So it means easygoing. So he became so irascible that little Joe thought he was going to turn purple. Just for this question, I will let you also have the synonym because I think I made a mistake and said synonym rather than reading our antonym. But we can read for context in this passage, he became so irascible that little Joe thought he was going to turn purple. Now think about it, you don't turn purple because you're really like happy, you turn purple because you're angry. And we also can look at the other words in the passage. So um, nothing could please him, his temper had risen, he raged, he became so irascible. So by saying so irascible, we're building on the description of the character beforehand. So he was already stomping around, he was already raging, and then he became so irascible, he got even more angry, so he would have become frustrated. So indeed, the synonym here was, um, the synonym would have been D, frustrated, but we wanted the antonym, which is easy going. So the opposite of someone who is irascible is someone who is easy going. So irascible means full of rage. Again, if we want to think about the like other words that have IR in it, think about like irritated or irate um, or irked. Lots of words that mean like irritated or frustrated begin with the IR prefix. So that's another way of helping you identify synonyms. Look at the beginning bit of the word and think, hmm, do I know any other words that begin with IR? Maybe they're related in some way. It doesn't always work, but it's a good starting point if you're a bit stuck, you know what I mean? Um, some people were asking what jovial meant. Jovial means like, uh, like happy. <laughs> so if you're happy, you are jovial. So some people might say, I am jovial. Um, okay, so this question, we already talked about it. I already know a lot of you know the answer to this. Feigned means um, faked. I'm just gonna, just for time saving, I'm gonna tell you that it was faked because a lot of you already answered that in the Q&A. To feign something is to um, fake something or to pretend, okay? Right, so, Let's have a look at the next sentence. Which synonym could replace the word delayed so that the meaning of the sentence doesn't change? Let's have a go. A, B, C, or D. Launching the poll right about now. So which synonym could replace the word delayed so that the meaning of the sentence doesn't change? Though the bus was delayed, nobody minded as they sat in the sun and told each other stories instead. Cute, friendship, miss those days. I mean, I still have friends, but you can't go outside anymore. Right, so is the answer held up, stopped, maintained, detailed or coming? We've had about a minute, so I'm just Going to leave another 10 seconds on the poll. Very well done. Let's have a share of those results. The majority of us went for answer option A, which is completely correct. It means to be held up. Delayed means held up. So it is to stop. Really, really nice. Okay, 
Which synonym could replace the word cast so the meaning of the sentence doesn't change? Let's have a look. I'll give you a minute to have a vote and then I'll start talking through the answer. So the moon cast a soft glow over the cottages below. This is a harder one. So if you're ha having trouble here, the moon cast a soft glow over the cottages below. Think about the verb, it's clearly a verb because we know that we have our subject, the moon, and the moon is doing something that's casting a soft glow. So what do we think to cast something means? You can also think about where else you can use the word to cast a spell. Can you view a spell? Can you indicate a spell? Right, 10 more seconds, then I'll end the poll. If you want to have a structural challenge, can you try and give me a, an antonym of cast in the chat? What would be the, an antonym of the word to cast? Okay, get your last votes in now. And then I'll end the poll and see how we all voted. Okay, let's see how we did end the poll and share results. You can see the majority of us went for answer option D, which is perfectly correct. It is to emit. So cast is a bit of a hard word because it is in, um, cast is the past tense. So to cast is to emit or to give out. So again, like, yes, like carbon emission, well done. So emit means to give out. So carbon emissions is very good. It's really nice um, antonyms coming through the chat. Well done, Reese. Absorbed would be a good antonym or take away. Well done, Janet. Blocked, well done, Nancy. So again, really well done on the stretch challenge there, everybody. So to cast is to emit something. So an antonym of that would be to absorb something um, or take something away. Really nice job, everybody. I think Reese was the first person to get to an antonym that I saw. Well done. So the moon cast a soft glow over the cottage just below. The moon emitted a soft glow. So that's what emit means. Right, we have another question. I will release the poll and then just quickly read through. So we need to a synonym for the word surreptitious. So a surreptitious look flashed across her face and her mother knew that she was hiding something. Oh, what have you been doing all day whilst I've been at work? Her mother repeated. It looks to me like the house hasn't been cleaned. Uh, your homework hasn't been done and your clothes are still on the washing machine. Jenny turned her head, looked out the window into the garden and then smiled back at her mum. Surprise came a delighted roar of voices from the window. Happy birthday. Her mother jumped and pulled her hands up to her face. A broad grin formed on her face and her head tilted in contemplation. Smiling and chuckling quietly to herself, she put her hand on Jenny's shoulder and said happily, let's go outside, shall we? So a surreptitious look fl flashed across her face. What does that word mean? If you have already answered and you've told me the word for surreptitious, can you put an antonym for surreptitious in the Q&A? Okay, let's 
Oh, Zara, really nice word, conspicuous. That is an antonym of surreptitious, really, really good. Ah, oh, Aspidin, blatantly, really nice. I would say that the, the antonym of surreptitious would just be blatant though, because blatantly is an adverb. So if it, the word was surreptitiously, the antonym would be blatantly, but to be perfectly correct, we need to make sure it's the same word class. So surreptitious is an adjective, so its antonym also needs to be an adjective, which would be blatant. So well done for everyone on the stretch and exchange challenge as well, who got the antonym correct as well. Don't worry if you're still working on the synonym. I'm gonna just give us another five seconds So just have a guess if you're not sure. Well done, the majority of us went for B, a, a few of us going for E, serious, but the right answer is indeed stealthy. So if you're surreptitious, you're a bit secretive, it's a bit like, ooh, like if, when a surreptitious look um, flashes across your face, it would have been a bit like, like, you know, when you're like trying to keep a secret, like there's a, there's a surprise and you don't want to ruin it and you're trying to keep a secret. So you're like trying to keep like a cool face and then you just kind of have like a, Mm, I don't, I know I'm not meant to say anything. I'm trying to hide it. That would be a surreptitious look. So it's like stealthy or like secretive. That's what surreptitious means. Um, whereas if something is not surreptitious, it's very obvious. Um, so, or conspicuous or blatant, really nice words coming through um, today class, really strong vocabulary. So that is what uh, surreptitious means. Um, right. So now we want a synonym for contemplation so that the meaning of the sentence doesn't change. Again, um, if you answer this question really quickly, give me an antonym of contemplation in the Q&A. I'll just highlight in the sentence where contemplation is. I think I saw a crest for Scarlet. So it's in this part of the sentence here. Remember with the synonym, you should be able to put that word into the sentence, read the sentence again, and it would mean the same thing. So do we have any antonyms of contemplation in the Q&A while we wait. Sorry, Yasmin, for calling you Aspidin earlier. Yeah, really nice, Tali. Disinterest would be a good um, antonym for contemplation. Yep, indifference as well, Tali, good job. Sue, really good, avoidance or ignorance. Disenchanted, nice, anonymous attendee. Discombobulated, oh, what a good word, Yasmin. Hatred from Tegan, yeah, that could, that could work. Like apathy is another word for contemplation, is another antonym for contemplation, really nice. Empty headed, nice. We'll go over what the different words on the screen mean in a second. I'll just give us another five seconds to have a vote. Okay, let's see how we all voted. And the majority of us went for answer option E, which is completely correct. So a contemplation is a thought, okay? So when you're contemplating, you're just kind of sitting, chilling, and having a nice little think about things. That is a contemplation, so it's the same as a thought. Now, I'd say a red herring in this would be retrospect. Retrospect is, is when you are 
thinking about something in the past. So retro, think about like retro clothes, right? If you want to wear like fringe and like flared trousers, you'd look really retro. Retrospect means in the past. So when we know that the mother isn't thinking about something in the past, she's contemplating the current situation. So retrospect doesn't make sense. That is a nuanced meaning, okay? Because a retrospect is a type of thought, but it's specifically relating to the past, whereas this is a present thought. I was particularly impressed with everyone who gave me a good antonym of contemplation um, in the chat. Um, so the opposite of a thought would be something. So if you think, if you're contemplating, you're thinking about something. So an opposite of contemplation is when you're not thinking, which is when you might be apathetic or you might have like an apathy. Apathy means you're not interested in anything. Um, or disinterest, really, really good. Harder word to get an antonym for, but very impressed with everyone's work. Right, okay, now we're gonna go over nuances of meaning. And then we have a few more questions in the last 10 minutes. So a nuance is a subtle shade of meaning between synonyms. So this is definitely an upper key stage two skill that you need to be working on in years five and six as you prepare for um, high school. So examples are like ha of happy or gleeful, joy joyful, content, untroubled, carefree, cheery. Now they all mean happy, they are synonyms, but there's a difference between being carefree and being content, for example. So I might be quite content with a nine to five job you know what I mean? I'm content. I'm happy. I know my I know my hours. I know when I'm working, but I might not be particularly carefree because I've got to go to the same place um, at 9 a.m. every day until 5 p.m. So that's not particularly carefree. So I might not necessarily be kept like I was so carefree in my nine to five job doesn't really work. I'm very content in my nine to five job, which is perfectly great. That's also you. You're still happy. But carefree might be like when you're on holiday. So um, I'm very content in my nine to five job, but when I go on holiday, I'm really carefree and really happy. So that is an example of a nuance in meaning. So again, they have slightly different meanings. So even though they're synonyms, um, they don't have exactly the same meaning. So another example would be content, being satisfied, and gleeful is high energy and joyful. So when you're content, you're happy and satisfied, but when you're gleeful, you're like full of energy and really exuberant and like maybe sometimes like how I am very overly gleeful in some of the lessons. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily like, I am content in the lessons because I find them very satisfying, but I think gleeful would be the best synonym of happy to describe me. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> okay, so that's what we mean by nuances. So with that in mind, let's put that to the test. Which is the most suitable synonym to use for the word nervous in this particular sentence? Let's have a vote. Biting his nails was one of his worst habits. He couldn't help doing it when he was nervous, like he was now waiting for his exam results. So he decided to sit on his hands instead. So what is the best word for nervous? The best synonym for nervous? Great job, a hundred or so of us have already got the right answer. If you think you've got the right answer, could you give me an antonym for nervous in the Q&A please? Yeah, very good. Really nice examples coming through. Courageous, well done, Rachel. Leslie, excited. Confident, Jack. Very good. Smug, highly nice. Yeah, that would be a that would be an antonym, but with a slightly nuanced meaning. Very good. Calm, Haley. Really, really nice. Bold, Samantha. Very good. Kibron, brave. Yes, very good. Confident, and another popular one. Assad, too. Calm. Yeah, calm. Arfin, well done. Relaxed confident I would say excitable might not necessarily be the best antonym of anxious because you can be anxious and excited you know what I mean like you're going on a roller coaster and you're about to do the big loop you might be a bit nervous and anxious but you're also excited so I wouldn't say excited is the best antonym for um nervous okay um another five seconds on the poll let's see how we voted we can see the majority of us went for answer option B, which is completely right. Um, anxious, agitated means angry. So if you're agitated situation, you're a bit like angry and agitated. Timid means shy. 
Um, so if you're a bit timid, you're a bit shy, maybe it's your first day back at school or something like that. Um, excitable is like, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to eat some yogurt. I'm going to have fun. That's excitable. Hysterical. Oh, preach. Hysterical is when you're like, oh my, like you're very, it's like very hyperbolic. It's very exaggerated. So maybe like when you get like an amazing present, you might be hysterical. Like, oh my gosh, I always wanted, I always wanted this mug. I'm so happy. Oh. That would be being hysterical, right? Like I always wanted these multivitamins. I'm so happy. Oh. You know what I mean? Or think about like an award show acceptance speech. Um, when you get really hysterical and really happy because you've won an award, um, you might be in hysterics and like super happy. Um, so that would be that, that's that, that done. Right, let's do another one of these. Um, what is the most suitable synonym, synonym for the word infectious? And a tricky extend challenge for this one, an antonym of an infe infectious in the Q&A would be very good too. Not just uninfectious. I want something a little bit more than that. So she had a great sense of humor and an infectious laugh. As soon as she started laughing, the whole room would laugh with her. So just while we wait, um, oh, some nice antonyms coming in through the um, chat. Safe, yeah, Infe safe could be an antonym of um, infections in certain situations, Haley, well done. Um, antiseptic, yeah, not catching, resistible, nice. Uninfectious thing, yeah, very good. Non-transmissible, nice, Adara. Really good. Viral means to do with viruses. Disinfected, not contagious, nice Reese, really good. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the um, poll. So I'm just gonna end the poll in another minute or so. Not a minute, that's a bit much. Another 10 seconds to have a vote. Okay, let's see how we all vote it. I can see the majority of us. So a lot of us went for B, viral. Let's have a look at what the answer is. So in this context, it is irresistible. So I'm glad we went over this question. So infectious, you might think a lot of infectious being to do with transmitting a disease, which is completely right. But here an infectious laugh is a laugh that you hear someone laughing and you wanna laugh with them, okay? So that's what we mean by an infectious laugh. It's really irresistible. The other words were red herrings and they were trying to confuse you. So just, so words like pandemic and viral, contextual right now, they are to do with infectious, but they're not necessarily um, synonyms. Um, a viral, something that is viral is to do with a virus. So um, COVID, COVID is a viral disease because it's caused by a virus. So I don't think this laugh is caused by a virus. That would be a very interesting symptom of a viral infection. Um, so irresistible is the best word to answer this question. So this is what we mean by those nuances of meaning. Infectious can just mean something that can be transmitted from one person to another. But if you have an infectious laugh or an infectious personality, it can also mean irresistible. Okay, so very, very good. We'll go over a quick recap. So we did um, antonyms, antonyms, and the etymology. I always say it with the Y first, etymology of the words. Who remembers where they come, which language do synonyms and antonyms come from? What is the origins of those words? Do we remember where they come from? Which, which language? Just scrolling through. 
yeah, well done, Busy. Well done, Rachel. They are Greek words. Very good. Eleanor and Zara too. And Tajita and Haley and Asad. Very good. They are Greek words. So that word sin in synonym means with, S-Y-N. Nim means word. And then anti means against. So that's where those words come from. We had some great answers on the questions and polls. Really well done, everyone. Um, remember, you can watch this lesson back on YouTube or the lesson library if you want to have a go at the questions again. It's good to practice things a few times. And there's also some antonyms and synonyms video freely available on our YouTube if you need a bit of extra um, reminder of them. Um, just a reminder of lessons this week, 9 a.m. up and atom with me, 11 a.m. lunchtime logic. And then at 2 p.m. we have atom in the afternoon. Um, and atom in the afternoon today, we will be building on built on words. I think we're going over homonyms, homographs and homophones later. And then James, the, our lovely other teacher, is doing lunchtime logic at 11. So you can go to those lessons too if you want, just as a bit of extra things to do during lockdown, you know what I mean? So if you have um, any questions, you can message us on any of our social platforms. You can email us at classes at atomlearning.co.uk. Check out our English YouTube videos. And there's also synonyms and antonyms videos in your lesson library too. What happens next? Um, see ya, see you later, hopefully. Um, complete a quick questionnaire, log into your Nucleus platform, and there will be a learning challenge waiting for you to complete. So please do the homework for this lesson too. Um, I've had a lovely time delivering this lesson. Really, really impressed with everyone's vocab today. Brilliant. Very well read class here. Have a lovely day and I will see some of you at 2 p.m. I believe. Have a lovely day. See you later. Bye.